we recommend, and we have a service where we do this. If you're interested, this is something I'm sure that you can do on, on your own. We're encouraging you to do it on your own. But you want to you know, start off and sort of assemble who this data governance leadership is going to be, who are the champions over the process. Um, and, then, and then you want to do an assessment of your current data governance. Like, what do you have out there? This is like the data governance asset thing. And, and as part of this assessment, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on, you know, it, it's sort of interviews and things like that um, as well. From that assessment, then you're going to create recommendations based on what you've identified as issues and goals. And then once you have those recommendations, and these are aspirational recommendations of all kinds, then you're going to do a prioritization and scoping of that, right? Okay, great. We want to do all these things. We can't do all these things at once. What are we going to do first? What are we going to do second? Where are we going to, what's the rollout of each one of those things? Where, what's the return on this? Um, that becomes your data governance roadmap and your pragmatic plan. Then you want to come up with some sort of execute, you know, actionable pilot project to, to start off with with that, and then to expand. Like this is not just a document to go on a shelf. This is something that is designed to actually implement. And then, you know, if you've done this right and you've documented some ways, you know, like what the goals of these things and what the outcomes of these these best practices are, you know, then measure success as applied to these, you know, um, to real outcomes. So we we built this to be getting success. So we sort of covered that, but that's the general general process. So from an assessment standpoint, you know, you want to decide what level of human involvement you want. You, you can do it just strictly with your data governance leadership team and get some key stakeholder input. Um, or if you want to, you can do broader interviews, you know, throughout your whole organization on creators and consumers and things or, or, do, or do surveys. Um, we have a document, I'm going to bring it over here, that is available if you're interested that we use as kind of a template for when we do our services and it has a whole bunch of different things in it, but it's got a sample kind of um, questionnaire for the stakeholders and the types of questions that we ask and, and interview questions for, um, uh, you know, for the broader audience and, and things like that. So it's, it's just a, a starting point for like the types of questions to ask. I would, you know, you're going to want to adjust this for your organization, but um, um, so uh, you know, and, and part of that might also be the end of, you know, methods to do inventory of your current data systems and things like that. Um, so um, the one thing that is uh, of note here when you're doing these, these interviews is that for your kind of like data governance leadership, you can ask explicit, explicit questions about data governance. Like, do we have a glossary? Do we have this? Do we need that? Or, you know, those types of things. When you're talking to your, um, you know, general kind of layperson who is a user or a creator of reports, like they might not know these data governance terms specifically. And as part of this interview process, hopefully at the end we're going to educate them on these terms as they start being a part of the data governance process. But you want to ask them, you know, uh, you know, what's what is working in terms of your ability to use data or write reports or get data or ask questions, you know, and 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 get those kinds of responses. And that's going to key into your your key issues and themes. So once you have that analysis, that assessment done, just kind of the raw input from people about what's working, you can start developing recommendations. So you want to take the, the stuff that people have said on what the, the symptoms are, the, the, the challenges or, or things that are, that are standing in the way of using data, look for some root causes for that and come up with recommendations. So you know, we tend to have some themes and this is in that document, like it might be about access to data or ownership or knowledge and data literacy or, literacy or data quality or security or timeliness. You know, and, and things like that. And there always there's something new that you find out that maybe the issue is around, you know, accessibility or something, you know, from, from a disability standpoint, who, who knows? But stuff that's it's not in a common theme, but that's actually really important that comes up. But you want to group these sort of the things that people report in the themes and then look for a root cause. You don't have to do a fishbone analysis, but I always like this. You're going and saying like, well, you know, what, what is causing people to not have this be done in time? And then that'll really kind of identify where there's a real opportunity for changes. Once you have those root causes, you know, then you want to look at like, well, how can we, and you know, how can we solve that, that root cause by, you know, by, you know, what, what sort of best practices are that we can do to, to fix that, you know, and a lot of data governance best practices are designed to help solve a lot of these root, root causes. Um, and it's not about just like, you know, one of the things that we encounter is people will say, you know, the issue is that, you know, our data warehouse is old and undocumented. And what we really need to do is to document our data warehouse, right? And that, that's a project. 
documenting the data warehouse. And that can be maybe something that is that, that you do as part of the scope, but the root cause is that you know you don't have, there's lacking kind of a, a, a culture for a general catalog or a process with which to document that. So you want to think about what's the what you know we have a best practice for for documenting our, our data systems. And then what we're gonna do for the first thing is we're gonna use this one area that is particularly bad at it and, and adopt it. But the the issue is that it, the problem isn't that there's this one thing that's wrong. The problem often is that there's a uh, you know that that's a symptom of the fact that, that there's not a culture for documenting things, right? Or, or whatever it might be. Um, so again, we're looking at making an aspirational list um, uh, of recommendations and and, uh, and things that need to be done. And, and don't worry if they're too long term or too out of there, as long as they actually you know have a, a real return on what you're trying to do. Um, and don't worry too much about prioritization because you want to make sure that you're not leaving anything out here for what what needs to be done. But the next step then is to prioritize and 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 define, so the scope, you've got framework effort, you've got content effort, you've got organizational scope, tools and systems and, and individuals and roles. And you gotta think about how you're gonna you know, prioritize things. So you wanna take all that content and prioritize based on impact on your defined goals, feasibility, desire of the team, and return on investment. Uh, and, and, and know that you don't have to, to boil the ocean and do all of this, because you can't. Um, so allow yourself to start with a small scope and, um, you know, decide on your initial scope of data, data governance content, the initial scope within your organization for a kind of content role, and the, which technologies you're going to use, and whoever you've sort of recruited for steward roles, and then just expand out from there. Um, all right, so lastly, sort of the next thing, last thing you want to do is I said, once you've got that, you know, that then becomes your roadmap, right? And you're going to share that out to your leadership and people who are looking at it, and, and yourself, your own team. Um, and then Again, have an actionable first step, like having that thing, we're gonna you know, do a data, um, a data glossary and report request process along with this first reporting, the set of reports that we're implementing for this new thing we're doing. Like attach this effort to something that you're doing that's real. Um, and, and then measure the success as you go. So again, don't end up just with a binder on a shelf, okay? So uh, make sure that there's a, uh, an actual applicable real world world um, method. And if you can't think of a real world thing to apply it to, then maybe it's misprioritized and you shouldn't be doing it and you should look for something else.